In the last couple of lectures, we learned about document and query middlewares. Now, let's learn about aggregation middleware in Mongoose. And as you can guess, aggregation middleware allows us to run functions before or after an aggregation happens. In order to understand aggregation middleware, what we are going to do is, we are going to use our previous example. So, in the previous lecture, we write the logic where we are only displaying those movie documents at the result where the movies are released. So, where the release date of a movie is less than or equal to the current date and time. If a movie document has a release date which is greater than current date and time, in that case, we are not displaying that movie in the result. Basically, we are only displaying those movies, we are only returning those movies in the result where the movie is released. Now, here if I go to this moviescontroller.js, here we have this route handler function called get movie stats. And inside this route handler function, we are using aggregation pipeline and we are performing some aggregations on the movie documents. So here, when we are performing these aggregations on the movie documents, these aggregations will be performed on all the documents. So basically, while aggregating the movie documents, it will also include the not released movie document. But we don't want that. Let me actually show you that. So if I go to Postman, let me copy this endpoint and let's open a new tab. And there, after this endpoint, let's say movie stats. If I click on the send button, so here we have only one document for release year 2013. That's because if you see here at the end, we have added this match stage to only include those documents where the max price is greater than 60. So let me go ahead and let me comment this stage for now. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the postman again. And let's make a request. So now we have all those documents with the given release year. So here we have for 2014, here we have for 2013, and here we have for 2023. And if you see for 2023, it says that we have total three movie documents. But if you go to get all movies, and here we have all the movies in the result. And if I scroll down and if I check the release year, you will see that only two documents has the release year as 2023. Okay, so this is the first document where the release year is 2023. And this is the second document where the release year is 2023. If I scroll down, we will not see any other movie document where the release year is 2023. Okay, so as you can see, no other document has a release year 2023 except those two documents. But here in the aggregation, we can see that for 2023, we have movie count as three. That means there are three movie documents where the release year is 2023. So the third document here is basically the sample movie document. So let me go to Compass. So here we have this sample movie document in our movies collection where the release year is 2023. But since the release date of this movie is greater than the current date and time, that means the release date for this movie is in October 2023 and current date is 26th of March 2023. So since the release date here is greater than the current date and time, that's why this movie is not displayed in the get all movie result. Basically, we don't see that not released movie in this result. But when we are performing aggregation, there we are not checking for not released movies. So the aggregation is happening on all the movie documents. But what we want is, we want to perform this aggregation on those movie documents which are released. We don't want to include not released movies in the aggregation. So one way to do that is to include a match stage at the top. The very first stage should be match stage here. And there, we can say that we want to filter all those movie documents where the release date is less than or equal to. So I am going to use this less than or equal to operator. And here we can say date dot now. Now here, this date dot now will not work. In case of find, so basically here for the find, we are using this date dot now. So this date dot now basically returns the current date and time in milliseconds. And this find method will convert 
that current date and time in milliseconds to appropriate date and time in order to do the comparison. But that will not happen in case of this match stage. Okay, so here in this case, if we use this date dot now, it is going to return date and time in milliseconds. But here, if we go to this get all movies API, there you will notice that the release date is actually a date and time. That means here we are trying to compare this date and time with a millisecond value, which is an integer. And that's why it will not work. Let me actually show you that. So let me save the changes here. And let's go to Postman. Let's go to this tab where we are calling this movie stats API. So when I click on the send button, you see, we don't see any data in the result. That's because here the comparison is not happening properly. So here, instead of using date dot now, which is going to return the current date and time in milliseconds, let's use new date constructor, which is going to return the current date and time. Okay, let's save the changes here. Let's go to Postman. And now if I click on the send button, you see we have the result. And now if I scroll down for 2023, now you will see the movie count is two. So this is working as expected. But if I go back again, and if I scroll down, we also have another route handler function, which is get movie by genre. And there also we are performing some aggregation. And there also we want to perform this aggregation only on the released movie documents. So again, what we will have to do is we'll have to copy this line. Okay. And we will have to paste it before this unwind. And if we have some other route handlers also where we are using the aggregation, there also we will have to do the same thing. So here we are basically repeating the same code and I don't want to implement it in this way. So here, instead of doing it like this, what we are going to do is we are going to use aggregation middleware and to use aggregation middleware. Let's go to moviemodel.js. Okay. And here, let me use movie schema. And on that, let's call this pre method. So basically here we are going to create a pre aggregation middleware. Now to this pre first, we need to specify the hook here. The hook is going to be aggregate. Basically the event is going to be aggregate and then we can specify a middleware function. And as we already know, this middleware function is going to receive the next method as its argument. So let's first go ahead and let's call this next method. Okay. Now inside this middleware function, let's first go ahead and let's try to log this just to check what this here looks like. So in case of a document middleware, this points to the currently processing document. Okay. So this is a document middleware. And in this case, the, this keyword will point to the currently processing document. In case of a query middleware, the, this keyword points to the currently processing query in the same way, in case of an aggregation middleware, this keyword points to the currently processing aggregation object. So let's save the changes here and let's see how this aggregation object looks like. Let's go to Postman and here when we make a request to, you know, this endpoint, what will happen is this route handler function will be called. And inside this route handler function, we are calling this aggregate function. So before this aggregation will happen, this middleware will be called. And this middleware will have access to that aggregation object. Let's actually see that. So let me click on this send button. So here we are not worrying about the result here, but here we have a message, an error message and say next is not defined. Okay, so it should be next. All right, so if you see here, the aggregation object is logged. This object which you see here is an aggregation object. Now this aggregation object also has a method called pipeline and this pipeline method returns the aggregation pipeline, the complete aggregation pipeline. Let's actually see that. So let me save the changes again. Okay. Let's go to Postman. Let's make a request again. Okay. Here we don't need to worry about the result. Let's go back to VS code. And this is the result returned by the pipeline method. So this pipeline method here, it is returning an array. And in that array, we have 
all the aggregation stages which we are using. So if I go to this movies controller and if you look at this aggregation pipeline, it looks exactly same as this one. So here also the first stage is batch. The second stage is group where we are specifying these fields and the third stage is short. So this aggregation pipeline is exactly similar to this one which we are seeing in the console. Now what we need to do is in order to achieve our requirement before this match stage we need to add another match stage and using that match stage we are going to filter only those documents where the release year is less than or equal to the current date and time. So we know that this this dot pipeline method it is going to return us an array if you see it is returning us an array and now we want to add a new element at the beginning of this array and to add a new element at the beginning of this array we can use unshift method unshift is an array method in javascript which we use to add an element at the beginning of an array and to this unshift we can pass the element which we actually want to add so here we want to add an object there we want to have this dollar match stage to that we will assign a set of curly braces and there we will specify the field name which is release date and then we are going to use the operator less than equal to lte and then we will specify the value so here the value is going to be new date okay so now what will happen is this unshift method will add this stage in the beginning of the pipeline which this method is returning so basically this stage will be added before this match stage so what it will do is it will filter all the documents which are released and on those released documents only those released movie documents only these aggregations will be applied same thing will happen for the another route handler also so inside this get movie by genre there also we are performing some aggregation so what will happen is before performing all these aggregations first this match stage will be pushed in the beginning of this array that means it will be added before this unwind stage it will match only those documents where the release date is less than or equal to the current date and time it will filter those documents and then it will apply these aggregations only on those documents okay so let's go ahead and let's save the changes. Let's go to Postman and let's see if our implementation works. So when I click on the send button to make a get request to this API, it will return a stats based on the release year. And if I scroll down for the release year 2023, now it is showing only two movie documents. So movie count is two. That means now it is not including the not released movie document. Okay, so I hope with this example, the aggregation middleware is clear to you. Now here, I'm not going to create a post aggregation middleware because I don't have any use case for that, but it will be same like the post query middleware or post document middleware. Okay, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.